So when it comes to, is breakfast the most important meal of the day? Well, Rob Alfie and Perform and welcome back to another video guys and in this video today I'm going to be watching and reviewing a video by Dr. Berry and the title of this video Worst Breakfast in the World Avoid This and this video was done around three years ago it seems that he has updated his title and put 2020 in the title so obviously it's still relevant now I would love to know what the worst breakfast in the world is and Dr. Berry has over 1.2 million subscribers on YouTube obviously a following is everything these days so he must know what he's talking about uh, so let's get into it and see if I agree or disagree if you're going to eat breakfast and break your fast choose the best quality nutrients for your brain and your body I agree you want to choose a breakfast that is nutritious that is going to provide the macro micronutrients to start off your day yeah I, I agree with that but let's see what he recommends what you definitely don't want to do eat junk that's going to inflame your body raise your blood sugar raise your insulin level and get your day off to a terrible start I see where this is going but guys let's keep watching insulin raising your blood sugar levels Let's see if he's got any validity to his claims. A lot of people patient and they say, you know, I, I've got to do better. I've been eating a sweet cake and a soft drink. That's what I usually grab for breakfast because I'm in a hurry. Very true, very common. Okay, when people are in a rush, okay, they tend to grab whatever they can. They see breakfast as the most important meal of the day, which it is not the most important meal of the day. If you don't want to have breakfast, you don't need to have it. There's a lot of people that actually don't have breakfast. It really depends on you as an individual. Skipping breakfast can be a really good tool in actually helping you decrease your overall caloric intake for the day. So when it comes to, is breakfast the most important meal of the day? Well, you can define the answer for yourself guys because again individualized as always you would think that that's the worst breakfast in the world but it's not there are definitely better options out there 100 percent yeah it's probably not the best option but it's also not the worst and i want to make this very clear guys okay when it comes to defining a meal okay you cannot base your nutrition off one meal are you hitting your macro and micro and calorie goals for the day what you'd like to do when you break your fast is to break it with good quality fats and good protein and very, very little uh, carbohydrates and definitely no sugars and no starches. You can consume carbohydrates in the morning. There are good options okay, of carbohydrates that you can consume in the morning. What you don't want to do is raise your insulin level so that you risk putting fat around your middle and putting fat in your liver and worst of all, putting fat in your pancreas. And there are better options of carbohydrates. So for example, oats, which are low GI, low glycemic. They're filled with nutrients, okay, your macro and micronutrients. They also have a good amount of fiber and a good amount of protein in there. Yeah, you can consume carbohydrates in the morning and you can choose better options for yourself. It's down to you. Good quality fats, some good protein. If you're going to have any kind of a carbohydrate, make sure that it's a very high density nutrition vegetable or berry or sometimes fruit seldomly. I am very surprised he's put said fruit because I tell you what, there's this thing around fruit at the moment that it's the worst thing in the world. Fructose, oh my God. You know, it's kind of thrown out the carbohydrate model. You cannot just eat starches and sugars for breakfast. Well, if you want to, you can, but it's really down to you as the individual guys. Your breakfast has to meet your goals, okay? What are your goals? If you are on a high fat diet, then you will, of course you want to avoid the carbohydrates. But if you are someone who is not really trying to avoid carbohydrates, then you want to have carbohydrates that are going to be nutritious. Don't just eat sugary foods in the morning, processed foods, because what does that do, guys? Well, for starters, it's high in calories and lower in the amount. It can also create bad eating behaviors. Okay, it starts off your day bad by creating bad behaviors. If you are consuming foods that don't fill you up, guys, you're gonna eat more. If you consume foods that are lower in calories but higher in the amount that are gonna fill you up to your next meal, then you're not gonna to wanna to eat more food. So let's look at it like this as well, guys. Why breakfast can be important. Well, you work all day long, so you don't have the option to make your own food. And the only meal that you have control over is in the morning, breakfast. Well, you can start off your day with the right foods, nutrient-dense foods, that are gonna help you meet your goals. 
because you know later on throughout the day that you're probably going to consume foods that ain't the best for you. So start off your day right with breakfast, eating the right foods. People say, well, what do you, I usually have pancakes and syrup and, you know, eggs for breakfast. Well, that's, is that, is that better or worse? Definitely better. Eggs are filled with a good amount of healthy fats. Okay, good amount of protein. 100% better. Maybe a little better because of the fat and protein you got in the egg, but you basically cancel all the benefits from the pancake and syrup. Flame your system, spike your blood sugar, spike your insulin. The fact that the meal is probably higher in calories, eggs, pancakes, it's not important. No, no, it's not important, you know, the fact that it's higher in calories. No, no, it's not important, no. So I've consumed, let's say eggs, but I've had some sort of carbohydrate that's gonna inflame my system. So now all the benefits are gone. What if, I consume those foods, but by the end of the day, I'm in a calorie deficit and I'm losing weight. Nothing's really bad, guys. If you consume too much or something, then it is bad. Nutrition is individualized to the individual. Okay, in some cases, controlling insulin would be a good approach in individuals who are more insulin resistant. But in other cases, people who are more insulin sensitive tend to do better on a low fat diet. So what does that mean? Nutrition is individualized. So a lot of people who come to me saying, hey, I, have, I was having that candy bar, that soft drink. I thought, well, I'm going to do better. I've started now eating good organic whole grain breakfast cereal with skim milk. But the problem is, doctor, that I haven't lost any weight doing that. And remember your overall caloric intake for the day. Uh, nah, that's not important. Nah, it's, it's just not important. And my blood sugars are still just as high doing that. And I don't understand why that is. Here's why that is. Because that is the worst breakfast in the world. No, it's not. Is it the best option in the world? No, but it's not the worst breakfast in the world. Let's be honest. If we compare that to the sweet cake and the sugary drink in the morning, it's going to have less protein, less fiber, more added sugar, depending on the cereal that you buy, potentially be higher in calories. And if it is higher in calories, then really you can ask if your goal is weight loss, what is better? Could you choose better options than cereal and skimmed milk? 110% you could choose better options. And you can choose better options of carbohydrates in the morning. Carbohydrates are not bad, guys. They're not bad, okay? It's individualized to you as the individual. I say this so much. If you grab a candy bar and a soft drink, you know that's crap. For you, you're in a hurry and you basically just don't care that morning and you break your fast with basically slow poisons that are- Cause death or illness. No. Going to inflame your body, make you fatter and push you towards becoming a diabetic. Make you fatter? <sighs> Elaborate on that a little bit more for me because how does it make you fatter? The calories. If we are talking about something that is gonna make you fatter, okay, it's gonna to lead to a weight gain. We need to be talking about our calorie intake, our overall calorie intake. Let's stop disregarding calories because they are relevant, all right? If we want to lose weight or gain weight, calories in, calories out. It's always going to be relevant, guys, no matter what way of eating you are on. The reason that cereal and skim milk is the worst breakfast in the world is because they claim to be healthy. They're all grain-based crap, okay? They spike your blood sugar, they spike your insulin, their glycemic index is terrible. Yeah, they do spike your insulin and blood sugar levels, okay? And are they the best options in the morning? No, they're not. If we're talking about cereal or breakfast, okay, how many calories are we consuming at that meal, okay? What is our overall calorie intake? Calories are dependent variables, okay? How many calories have we got left for the day, right, based off what we expend? If you're consuming a high number of calories in the morning, okay, you've consumed most of your caloric intake in the morning, and then you're gonna go throughout the day eating other meals, those meals are gonna have to be very low in calories. You limit your options when you consume a lot in the morning, but why are we not considering the calorie intake? I get insulin, glucose, it is relevant in some cases to the particular individual, but why are we not considering calories? Because that is, that is important too, isn't it? Is it not important? Because I tell you what, if you consume 6,000 calories in a day of fat, of all these healthy fats, 
then I tell you what, you will gain weight. You will gain weight, 100%. And yeah, they have, you know, they have vitamins and minerals. And so I tell people, okay, what if I took some rat poop and sprinkled some vitamins and minerals on there? Would that make that a health food? Would then, of course not, it's rat poop, don't eat that. But look guys, I eat that before the gym. It, 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 it's great, it is. Great example, that is. Operation made cereal, breakfast cereals. They're crap. You can sprinkle some vitamins and minerals, which are normally, you don't even absorb them half the time. Yeah, okay, they do. They do tend to put, especially within cereals, vitamins and minerals. Okay, and what is the bioavailability of those vitamins and minerals? So the skim milk, they've taken all of the fat, which is really the only good thing in a dairy product. And so all you're getting is the sugar and the inflammatory proteins in the, in the milk. That's all you're getting. What is the calorie? content of those two meals would love to know if you thought that you're better and you're starting to eat a, a, a breakfast cereal with skim milk you might as well have the candy bar and the coke if the calorie content was the same for those two meals what is the better option would say the skim milk and the cereal is it healthier you can argue right yes but then if you're trying to meet a calorie goal, okay, if you're trying to consume a certain amount of macronutrients, so you're you're trying to consume you're on a low fat diet, then the skim milk option would be a better option for you. What are your goals? What are your objectives? Again, blowing things out of proportion too much, because we tend to do this on social media around nutrition. Uh, I don't know why we do this. You know, if you like skim milk, drink skim milk. If it makes you feel good, drink it. If you like full fat milk, drink it. If it makes you feel good, drink it. Some people can't drink milk, they don't like it, they're lactose intolerant, so, you know, it's really down to the person, isn't it? So A candy bar and a soft drink, yeah, that's crap. But also, that breakfast cereal and skim milk, also crap. Clearly, calories just don't matter when it comes to this, you know, what option is better. Please don't break your fast with something like that, flame your body, and push you towards becoming a diabetic. Now, is sugar consumption, especially added sugar consumption, okay, which added sugar is found in many sugar-sweetened beverages, is it linked to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes? Yes, research has found that if we consume a lot of sugar-sweetened beverages, it does increase our risk of type 2 diabetes. We have to also consider is how much are we consuming? Higher amount of calories, consume too much, it's going to increase your risks. But it doesn't mean you can't have sugar, but if you have too much of it, then yes, it will increase your risks. Facts, guys, these advocates, and am I including him in this? Yes. I am including him in this. Why are we blowing things out of proportion? A small amount of sugar, especially added sugar, okay, small amount consumed within our diet is gonna make us a type 2 diabetic. No, they are the facts. That's what you need to know. If you consume too much of it, then it increases your risks. All right? Stop scaring people, please. Yes, Gracie, I know. And that is it, guys. Let me know in the description, what do you think the worst breakfast in the world is? Okay, is it carbohydrates? Is it sugar? I'll see you later, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. What are you doing? Hello, guys. It's Gracie. Welcome back to the video. Oh, shit.